In 2014, on the 6th of February, five men would set out for what they thought would be a fun and adventurous dive into the Plura Cave system. But only three of these men would leave Plura Cave alive. The team of cave divers comprised of Kai Kankanen, Patrick Gronkovist, Yari Huterianen, Vesa Rentanen, and Yari Yuzamaki. The group of close friends had set out on an ambitious mission to traverse the Plura Cave, which is Northern Europe's largest water-filled natural cave. It presented a formidable challenge with its intricate passages and freezing temperatures, although it would not be the most challenging cave that the men had dived in. Despite slippery roads and navigation issues, the gruelling 15-hour drive through Finland, Sweden and Norway came to an end, and the team arrived at the Jordbrew farm near the cave entrance. They shared a beer together and turned in for the night, as it was important to rest properly before a long dive. The following morning, they prepared their equipment and discussed the dive plan. Their goal was to travel from one entrance to the other while recording the entire dive, since this had not been done before. The dive, with its depth exceeding 130 meters, demanded specialized skills and equipment, but luckily each member of the team was an experienced technical diver and fully certified in cave diving. They relied on closed circuit rebreathers along with a carefully devised bailout strategy, and if all goes to plan then the dive should take approximately 5 hours. Most of this time would be spent at decompression stops. The men divided themselves into two groups. Patrick and Jerry H would be in charge of cutting a hole in the frozen lake, creating an entrance into the water. Meanwhile, Vesa, Jerry, Yu and Kai would be trekking to the other entrance where they would leave supplies, dry clothes and food for once the dive had been completed. Then they would head back and after two hours they also would enter the water and begin the dive. One reason for this two hour window was to let any sediment settle to ensure everyone has full visibility, but mainly it was so that the other divers were ready to help if anything went wrong, and unfortunately, things would go wrong. Horribly wrong. As the first team descended into the icy cold but clear waters of Plura, Patrick and Jerry H, using their scooters, glided into the entrance of the cave. About one hour into the dive, Jerry H and Patrick had swam through the deepest parts which was about 110 meters lower than the entrance. They were due to head through a particularly narrow area. Patrick went first, but having made it through, he realized that the light of Jerry was nowhere to be seen. He turned around and could see Jerry in the distance, still in the tight passageway, frantically waving his flashlight around to get Patrick's attention. Patrick swam straight back to Jerry, trying to figure out what was wrong. Jerry had gotten stuck in the narrow passageway. He asked Patrick to detach one of his large bailout cylinders, which was apparently in the way. It was difficult and awkward to detach, but Patrick managed to get it off him and swam just a few meters away to put it down. But when Jerry saw Patrick swimming slightly away from him, he screamed for Patrick to come back. It was clear that panic was starting to set in. Patrick returned immediately to Jerry and tried to tell him to calm down. At this point, Patrick had also noticed that Jerry's scooter was jammed under a huge rock. He shouted and gestured at the scooter. Yari then forcefully yanked the scooter out of the rock, somewhat breaking it in the process. Yari then urged Patrick for the open circuit bailout gas, which is essentially their emergency air. Patrick knew at that moment that the situation was extremely bad. He handed Yari a mouthpiece from his cylinder. Yari took about 10 breaths, then switched back to his rebreather. They would continue this cycle three times, but at some point during this, Patrick noticed that Yari had nothing in his mouth and to Patrick's horror, he saw Yari start to inhale water. He tried pushing the regulator into Yari's mouth, but it was too late. Yari was gone. Patrick tried to get his friend out desperately, but soon he started to realize how heavily he was breathing and how panicked he was getting. He had to calm down and control his breathing and think for a moment. Once Patrick had calmed down, he realized that he had to get out. He looked back at the lifeless body of his friend and all he could think about was how Team 2 were going to be blocked by Yari. But knowing there was nothing he could do, Patrick continued on with the dive. About two hours after Patrick and Yari had entered the water, the other three men would begin their dive, as planned, with no idea what awaits them 130 meters down. Vesa was the first diver of the second group, and the first to discover Yari's body. He had to make a quick decision, turn back now or attempt to squeeze past the body and equipment of Yari. He decided on the latter, and would manage to get past Yari, but it added 15 minutes onto Vesa's diving time, which would mean he would have to spend 3 extra hours at decompression stops. Except, Vesa didn't have the sufficient air to make these stops, and would end up surfacing almost 80 minutes early. 
As Vaser surfaced, he started to feel pain in the joints of his knees and elbows, one of the first signs of decompression sickness. The second diver of Team 2 was Yari Yusamaki, but upon seeing the body of the dead diver, Yari completely panicked and began to overload his rebreather with CO2. The final diver, Kai, saw Yari in his panic and attempted to help, but there was nothing he could do. Yari was already gone. Kai decided he did not want to risk pushing through to the end and turned around and began the long swim back to the entrance of the cave. He would resurface almost 11 hours after setting out. When he did get back to the entrance in Lake Plura, the part they had broken had already frozen over again, but luckily it was still thin enough and Kai managed to break the ice and climb out. All three men were hospitalised with decompression sickness. The cave would be officially closed and a recovery mission was initiated calling in professional divers such as Rick Stanton. So just a few weeks later, Rick Stanton, accompanied by two other highly reputable recovery divers, entered the Plura Caves. But once they reached the bodies, it became clear to Rick that this was going to be far more difficult than he thought. The body of Yari H was still lodged in the tight passage, and it was blocking the way to the other body of Yari Yu. They returned to the surface and considered entering through the other entrance, but after careful planning they came to the conclusion that the whole operation was just far too risky, and so the recovery would be called off by the authorities. The survivors of the friends were devastated by this, and urged that they could go and get them much easier since they knew the cave, but the authorities had explicitly called off the search and even stated that the Plura Caves were closed and anyone entering would be breaking the law. Patrick, Vaser, and Kai didn't care they couldn't bear another day of their friends being down there. Knowing they had the experience and the gear, they felt it would be a great injustice for them to not go back down there and get their friends. So that's exactly what they would do. In secret, they gathered a group of experienced divers who would help in the recovery, and over the course of the next few months, they would meticulously plan a careful body recovery. Both bodies would be recovered without further issues, and they would be sent home to their families so that they could be put to rest and buried properly. The authorities decided they would not press charges in memory of the men who died in that cave. The incident and recovery was turned into a captivating documentary called Diving Into The Unknown, which I highly recommend watching. But if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, as I'd really love to reach 1k. Thank you, and until the next disaster, it's goodbye from me.